So let's see if we can make it look a little bit nicer. My uh, my goal is to make it look like this. Actually, I wanted to make it look much better than that. But as you can see, the only thing we're doing here is actually just adding round corners to the to the key, so it looks a little bit more natural. So that's what we're going to be trying to do here. Usually, you would be able to just set a border radius in your CSS if it's a normal HTML element, but we can't do that here. Also, we could just add some uh, some shadow with CSS usually, but again, we're not able to do that here. Uh, I wanted to add some shadow at least on the black keys, so it looks like there's a 3D effect, so they're elevated over the white keys. Um, but you can actually do that. But in order to do that, let me show you. You have to go inside every single element, and then every single um, of these, the keys here, I have to... I have to wrap this one in actually an SVG in its own SVG tag. So I would have an SVG with hundreds of SVGs. And no way, man. I'm not going to start to do that just to uh, add a shadow to it. So I got lazy and then I think next time I'm probably just going to use normal HTML elements for this. But yeah, it's an experiment and it's SVG and I learned some good about it and some bad about it. But we can actually add the round corners as you can see here. The only problem is that uh, we can do it on the Y and on the on the X. And let me show you what happens when we do that. Let's go back to the one that we are playing around with here. First of all, let's go to the code and the app.js. I'm just going to, I don't want to, I have something that's printing out. So I'm console logging. I'm just going to delete this one. We don't need that one anymore. Okay. So here, let's add rx which is radius on the x-axis we want that to be 15 we want that to be a string as well and then on the y-axis we want the same thing so ry ry radius on the x-axis on the y-axis is going to be 15 and then if i save this and we go back to our browser we can see that the white keys have round corners now, but you can see they have round corners on on the bottom, but also on the top, which doesn't look too good. Let me try to add this same thing to the black keys. So if we go back here, we need to find where the black keys are getting attributes added, and that will be down here. So black key text group, black key set attributes. So down here, I would think that this would be a nice place to do it we want to do the rx rx and the ry i'm going to set that as well ry okay what we're going to set the rx to is going to be i think eight is a better number here because they're not as big as the white keys so let's set it to eight and the same thing down here so let's see what happens if we go ahead and go back. Wow, look at that. We can see all of the keys are, uh, they have round corners now, but it looks stupid because we have it uh, on the top and on the bottom. And this is not what a real piano looks like. But unfortunately, that's the only way to easily add. We can't just add uh, on any corner, on the bottom corners or anything like that. We need to add it on all the corners at the same time. So in order to mitigate this, we need to make a little hack. We need to cheat. And a way to do that is to use CSS. So what we can do here, we can go to our code one more time inside our styles.css. Actually, all the way at the top here, I want to grab the whole piano. Remember, we have this div of piano. So I'm going to take piano and uh, I'm just going to grab the whole thing. Actually, now we grab the piano here. I just want to make sure that we even have this piano in here. I think we do. I think we do. Let's go to the browser and check it out in the elements. Yeah, we have the div of ID piano, and that's the one that we're grabbing now. And inside here, I want to make a, a clip path because I just want to move the, um, I want to cut off the 10 pixels off the top to remove the rounded corners and then move it up with a negative margin. That's a little trick you can use to do this. So clip path, and then you want to use the inset. And what you want to do here, I want to, actually 15 pixels, I want to move it up. So what I put in here is inset and then 15 px and then zero pixels, zero pixels and zero pixels like this. Let's save that and see what happens. Well, you can see I cut it off all the way up at the top here. So you cannot see they have round corners anymore, but now it's like floating down here. So I just want to move it back the 15 pixels with a margin 
with a negative margin top actually. So that's going to be minus 15 pixels and that will lift everything right back up where it belongs. So now you cannot see the, the rounded corners on the top. So I guess this is it and it should still work. Let's see if it does display the notes. It still works just like that. We can have some other notes display and um, yeah, it works. And yeah, it works. Uh, I'm very proud of us. I think we came a long way. And uh, of course, there are some things that you can still do with this thing. First of all, you should probably add a check to see if it's within the range of the piano that is set. And just throw some errors if there's something going on that you, you don't want. Another thing we're not able to use here is double sharps and double accidentals, which is, uh, that's a pain in the ass to, uh, to incorporate that. I tried that. Um, I do have it in my ear beater app. And what I ended up doing was actually just having a long list of, um, of enharmonic note names. So if there's a, if there is an D, D double flat three, let's say that this is a D flat and then a D double flat, that will actually be the same note as a C four. So I would have like a lookup table where I look up, uh, okay, do I have something that is D flat flat? Because then it's actually in harmonic with the C and so on and so forth. So that would just be like a translation table, but I should still place it um, right here or actually here. That depends on what it is you want to do, but uh, you can, you can play around with that. And I hope you come up with a solution uh, for that as well. And then you can use this for making different tools. Let's say you want this keyboard to visualize all different kinds of chords. So you could get a library like tonal.js. Let's say you want to show the, the major minor chord and then click on a button and then it will display on the piano and you could display different scales just by, um, just by putting in the name of it. So that's one way you could use this. There are so many different ways. I have been using this in my online ear training app, ear beater. Uh, but not just like this. Uh, I have the possibility of adding correct notes and incorrect notes. So I would have two sets of, um, of little dots I can put on the keys there. So this is a little bit different, but it works essentially the same, the same way, but see what you can come up with and leave a comment in the, in the comments. And I'm looking forward to see what you, uh, what you're building. I hope you enjoyed this and, uh, see you again next time. Bye-bye.